Hi all, welcome to my YouTube channel. Let's see in today's video how we will be implement the logistic regression with the hyperparameter tuning. In the last video, we make our data is ready for the modeling. Now in today's video, we discuss about what is the hyperparameter tuning. So basically hyperparameter tuning are of the two types. One is the grid search and one is the random search. So let's first discuss what is a grid search. So in the grid search, we are defining the parameter not the model parameter we are defining the parameter which can tune the model so we define the parameter in the form of a grid so in the grid you can assume as in a matrix so some rows some columns we define some kind of a parameter in a in a kind of a format of a matrix so then uh, in every combination whatever the combination in the rows and the column column the parameters uh, will evaluate and tune the uh, model so i'm going to start with the help of the logistic regression and first i will show you how to apply the grid search and then i will show you how to apply the random search before that if you see in this uh, askelon uh, page the grid search they give the full uh, uh, they give the full uh, class uh, description here there is the estimator there is the parameter grid what is the scoring so all the parameters all the or all the variable we should know what are the meaning of that so estimator is nothing it's a kind of the function say i'm going to implement the logistic regression so estimator is the logistic regression here so parameter grid is what it is the the parameter which we define in the logistic regression so let's see what are the parameter of the logistic regression so if you remember in the logistic regression we have in a penalty we have the l1 penalty l2 penalty we have the elastic net l1 penalty if you remember l1 penalty will create the sparsity in the data by default logistic regression use the l2 penalty but in case if you want to train your machine learning model based on l1 penalty so you have to be defined the per solver uh, which solver you which method you are going to be used so lb fgs is uh, uh, for default it will be used for the l2 penalty but for the l1 penalty you have to be define the solver so if we go into the cell solver so lib linear is work for the l1 and l2 board then sag is not work for the l1 then saga is work for the elastic net uh, l1 and l2 so let's keep uh, this step is simple we will be using the l2 penalty in our the logistic regression then let's go one by one so this is the penalty then uh, this is the dual means it will be used the dual form or the primal form of the logistic regression then tolerance is uh, something which will be uh, help to optimize the logistic regression it is an important uh, factor we will be, we will be discuss about tolerance in the later now the most important factor i want to discuss is a c so what is a c it is an inverse of regularization strength so let me use here the pen and i will be describe what is a logistic regression equation which we see in our theory so if you see the logistic equation there is an a one one term this is the cost function this is the cost function and plus regularization that is what the l1 and l2 and here i multiply the term that is a lambda so this lambda is a hyperparameter this lambda is a hyperparameter which which control your model to prevent the overfitting and underfitting how suppose if you decrease the lambda too much down you are decreasing the weight of this terminology and you are giving all the weight to the cost function now if you depend only on the cost function then your model can learn anything in the training that what we cannot found in the testing data set that means your model is start the overfitting to the data set but suppose if you increasing the lambda too much then what will be happen you are giving the full weight to the regularization term you are not at all thinking anything about the cost function that means your model is not learning anything so we have to be prevent overfitting and underfitting so we have to be regularize the lambda term now in the sql and library they give you the value of c so what is a c c is the one upon lambda so if lambda increase implies that c will decrease and if lambda decrease implies that c will be increased so that what they mention in your uh, 
in your uh, in your documentation also so c is the inverse of the regularization strength okay so why we are taking c in place of the lambda when we are implementing logistic regression because c is also they will implement in the support vector machine so making the same terminology now fit inter fit intercept means what if your uh, hyperplane that is your pi should pass from the origin or should not uh, or is not passing from the origin so that is the fit in a uh, fit intercept so if fit intercept is true means you are telling it is not passing through the origin we have one uh, bias term also that is a b okay then uh, this is the class weight so once uh, if if you have the balanced data set you no need to worry about the class weight but if you have the imbalanced data set then the full uh, class weight termino terminology come in the use because we will use the up sampling down sampling and uh, these things so okay so what is a random state random state means it is a, it it will be used when we are using the solver sag saga lib linear to shuffle the data so in the last video also i explain you uh, what the how what the random state will do and then solver already i explain you so let's let's implement uh, uh, let's uh, define first uh, what are the uh, what are the parameter we discuss for the logistic regression and then we will be implement the grid search on this so i'm i'm writing here what is a logistic parameter so what is a logistic parameter i have first what i am defining i am defining the c so i define in the dictionary that is a c it is a list of a dictionary and in the list of the dictionary i can give the c value that means i am defining here the lambda value so i define these are the value then what is my penalty penalty as i told we are going to use the l2 penalty but you can play with the l1 penalty but keep in the mind then you have to be define the solver as well then what i am defining the random state is zero and the most important i am defining the my max iteration so max iteration is what it is how much time uh, my model should uh, check with all the parameter before it stopping so i am defining it is in the list it should be start from the 100 it should go up to the 800 and it will take the jump off once i define the parameter then i call in the logistic uh, regression object so i call in the log and i am calling the what is my logistic regression so i create a new object as the name as the log then i am applying here the grid search so i am writing here the grid and i am calling the grid search cv it is very easy to do then i am calling the log and the my parameter grid is equal to my logistic para and uh, my cross validation is equal to 3 how we how we are going to the cross validation if so if you go here in the grid search if you see down okay so it determine the cross validation is creating a strategy by if you if you give the none it will be used the five fold cross validation you can define the k fold also so i am defining the three cross validation is the three fold and i am giving the scoring as accuracy accuracy so it will calculate how much accuracy it will uh, generate by taking the mean at the end then what i am going to do i am going to fit on the training data so model grid is equal to grid dot fit on which x train and y train i am fitting on my training data and then i am printing my best uh, grid search hyperparameter and what is my best grid search score okay so after running the grid search it will uh, the best parameter will become c is equal to 10 mean uh, 1 by 10 0 0.1 is my lambda and maximum iteration it will be taking the 100 and it will be using the penalty l2 and the uh, my accuracy coming the 87.6 percent okay this is pretty good uh, but what happened in the grid search as you increase the number of a parameter as it is checking for every combination it will be take the more time so when you have the too much parameters to define when you have the too much uh, variables to define then in place of the grid search to save the time you should go for the random search before that i just uh, show you how these parameters are uh, useful to predict over the x test now x test is the data which we not see so i'm just uh, running it 
and if you can see it will be giving the 0 0.8 uh, so 87.2 and it will be giving the 87.6 percent of the accuracy to me okay so here if you can see the it is um, and it have 0.4 percent of a gap so in play in now if i implement the random search uh, so in the place of the grid search in the in the grid search what we are doing we are defining all the parameters in the your uh, in form of the matrix but in the random search we are taking the parameter from the distribution so we will define one distribution and then we will tell this parameter will come from this range to this range from that distribution now from that distribution the values the the model will take randomly and it will be train on the training data and then then predict from the testing data so that what uh, the work of the random set so the full code is same in just it will be replaced the I'm, I'm i'm loading here the log uniform and in place of the grid search cv it will be coming in the randomized search cv and i'm just uh, defining here the uh, value of a lambda that is the value of the c it is coming from the log uniform distribution and the maximum iteration uh, 100 to 800 and now it's taking the 10 10 gap jump then i will be calling the object that is a logistic regression as you already see in that uh, and everything is same except this parameter in the grid search it is the parameter the parameter grid if you see here it is a parameter grid but in the random search it is a parameter distribution because it is asking which distribution uh, from which distribution your parameters are coming then i fit the model on the x train y train and let's see what is my the best score random search actually take the lesser time compared to the grid size student see it will give now so it is giving the maximum iteration is 270 maximum iteration it will take and near about 0.2 is the my lambda value okay near about and it is giving the 88 percent of the accuracy let's let me run again because it is a random now again now the value of the parameter will be changed here so let so so now the value of the parameter is changed now in the second one it will be taking only the 260 iteration and uh, near about 0 0.33 now it is telling the lambda value and it's still it's telling the grid search accuracy uh, sorry the random search accuracy is the 88 percent and similarly we can uh, we can predict on the x test and it is coming now the 87.25 okay so that's pretty good and uh, we can plot uh, the different confusion matrix i will be show you how to plot the auc roc curve so what is the auc roc curve the, 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 the there are a lot of other matrix are there if you remember here there is a lot of evolution matrix are there to check the your how your model is working so auc roc curve is one of the one of the best matrix to check when we have the binary classification problem because it will be tell if auc is greater than 0 0.5 then it will be tell your model is doing the correct things it will be uh, placing the unknown point in the correct class level if it is a 0 0.5 your model not doing anything it is a just kind of a dumb model so let's check what is my auc randomized search cross validation it's pretty simple you have to be import the roc auc curve then you have to be cal i calculate the roc auc and if i will if i'm showing here then it will be the 0 0.92 means it is correctly doing everything so 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 and so as i told auc roc curve is an uh, tell it is an excellent model if you use near to one which means it has a good measure of its separability and auc 0 0.5 means means model has no clue separation capacity whatsoever so this is the way how you can implement the grid search and the random search i will i explain i explain this topic with the help of the logistic regression and this is what uh, we discuss in the full case study the most the lot of the graph lot of the analysis we did in the case study so this is uh, this is what i i plan for to show you in this case study how to plot the uh, nice curve with the help of one of the matplotlib and the seaborn and we have the extraordinary library as well with that help of 
we can plot the more better curve so this is what uh, we discuss in this playlist i hope you learned something from this uh, video i not complete the playlist here i will be discuss how to present this case study suppose some beginners want to give the interview so how they want to present this case study in the interview what are the question you can expect there are the thousand of the question somebody can make from this uh, full uh, case study so uh, let's wait for that two two videos and uh, then we will be finish this uh, case study and we will be start the uh, new project in the new new playlist or okay so if you like this video then please like share and subscribe to my youtube channel i have the same but you can play with the linear uh, in the, you, you you should implement the support vector machine and check what are the how is your accuracy is uh, differing why i am using accuracy because it is a uh, not imbalanced data set i have then why uh, wh and you should not believe on the one model itself you have to be implemented the lot of the model like the logistic regression knn and the exiboost cataboost a lot of the uh, machine learning models are there then you have to be uh, select what uh, kind of a machine or machine learning model is working well now in this video i'm just showing you the logistic regression but you can do uh, other machine learning model as well so i hope you like this video so if you like this video then please like share and subscribe to my youtube channel i will meet you in soon in the next video thanks take care and bye bye